Welcome to session two of Research Methods. Today we're talking about selecting a topic. The last time we met, we were discussing why we do research, and we came to understand that the centrality of every research is a question that is being asked. So today what I'll try to do is to focus much more on selecting a research topic so that we can understand how we progress from selecting a research topic to determining the right question to ask. So because every research needs a topic to start from. So um, our session overview, what is considered as a good research topic and what's not considered as a good research topic? What's researchable and what was not researchable? And how does research topics relate to research gaps and research questions? Okay, so what can be researched? Our searching outline divided into four. What can be researched? What can influence your choice of a topic? A research gap and topic selection and creating a research title. I think that's what everybody will be interested in. <laughs> okay, so we are looking at chapter two of our research made easy book. And as you realize, the book goes alongside with the slides and the video. So I hope it will be relevant to everybody. Good. So what can be researched? Topic one. Now, when we met last time, we looked at the research process and we said that the research process has a number of steps which are, have to be flexible in terms of um, the progress through the steps. You have to have the flexibility of going back and then coming forth. So we realized that the first thing we are going to do today is selecting a topic, determine a research problem, and determine research gaps. We'll try to cover three of the issues that we have listed out there. Then we'll continue on every week until we reach such, um, the last point. Okay, so what can be researched? To be able to find out what can be researched, let me discuss what cannot be researched. Common and overused topics, topics related to rel religion and controversy, general topics, um, broad topics, topics that are too narrow, and controversial politics, political topics. So let me just mention what I mean by these topics that cannot be researched or can be researched. Whenever you're starting research, we want you to bring some originality, originality in terms of the knowledge that you create or the discovery that you bring into. So we will not be very glad as a university or as a lecturer or even as a scientific community if you just do a research on things that we know already and not telling us anything new. So most of the time, a common topic, a topic that has been well researched, like unemployment in general has been well researched globally. But maybe female unemployment in the extractive industry will be something that you may be very interested for us to learn from. Or even female unemployment in the extractive industry when pits are closed. For extractive industry, they dig pits to be able to take out a, a resource from the, from the land. And when the, res the, the extractive extracted pit, is, the resource is exhausted, the pit has to be filled. So what, hap what is the impact of closing down a mine or a pit on a female employment in a community? That is more narrow than just saying that you want to do what? A research on unemployment. So a common topic that is over is research. And how do you find out? You can Google it and see. Some topics, if you put them in Google, you have over a million of records. And you realize that almost before you started the research, there's an even an answer or a report that gives an answer to your research. So we want to push you to think outside the box, to look for something which is more original, something that is unique. And that's what I'm going to try to do throughout this session. So a common topic, if an internet banking in Ghana has been well researched, you may consider doing internet banking among rural banks. Interesting, and that will be a topic that you could pick up if only rural banks, you can find a rural bank that is practicing internet banking. Okay. Now, another thing, topic that we would like you not to step into as a business student or as a, a research student in a department, you always want to choose topics that are relevant to the topic, the department that you belong to. So. If you are not a religious in a department of religion and you want to pick a topic on, on religion, you have to always make sure that it has relevance to your area of research or your program of study. For example, if a marketing student wants to do something on religion, he can do a topic on marketing of churches or the impact marketing practices of churches in maybe in Africa. Or like what um, some researchers have done in the past. Dialog dialogic communication of churches in Africa, how churches communicate using different mediums of communication. That could be something that a communication student or a marketing student may want to consider. And an information system student doing something on, on religion could also look into the impact of mobile phones on church and attendance. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. 
and how you use mobile phones as reminder systems, as extending the sermon, giving people podcasts, and how you can be able to use it as a package from inform church information to um, congregants. So that could be an imp uh, opportunity for you to do. But if you want to do a study on the founding of churches, it's not going to be relevant to an information system student. Good. So we always say that relevance plays a key role. Good. So please check the requirement of your study. For example, marketing practices of fetish priests. Now, if you want to do that, it's a long stretch. But if you choose to uh, reframe it as contemporary marketing practices of traditional healers, you may find some people to be able to interview because there are a number of traditional healers in Africa who are now advertising their works or, or themselves on WhatsApp, on internet websites, and even on radio and TV. So you could actually be able to do a very interesting set of marketing practices of traditional healers. Now, if you go and choose a topic that you are not, is going to be controversial, and you may not be able to finish the topic, it may be very difficult for us to, for example, choose a topic that the verdict is, is still out in the court. For example, you say that maybe uh, your favorite musician goes to prison and say, why my, my, why my favorite musician went to prison? And that's the research you want to do. And you want to do a research on injustice and some on, in that case. One, you have to be very careful you don't go and do a research and interview people that will bring contempt to the issues that you are trying to but some people may stay away from the issue. For example, um, you may want to do a research on maybe genocide that occurred in Africa, and you want to do a research on that. Ask yourself whether you may have access to the people who will answer questions on it, or what perspective are you going to take the questions from? So we want to make your research researchable, so please choose topics that are within the, I'm not saying that you can't do topics which are within your, outside your reach, but what we want to emphasize is that, can you even finish on time? The topic you want to research on. Can you have access to the data? Remember what we said the other time concerning the research process. The fact that sometimes the research design has to change because your access to data can become, become limited. And that means that if you don't have enough sufficient data to be able to analyze, you can't answer the research question. So we want you to be very realistic in making choices of topics. So make sure that you can complete the research on time and have relevant and appropriate data to make conclusive answers. Otherwise, your research will fall apart, not because the research topic was not good, but because you didn't have access to relevant data that could answer your questions. Like we're talking about smartphone adoption by market women at Bozome, and you go there and nobody's on your smartphone. You have to change your question to basic phones. So please, to, uh, topics that are relevant to your area is important, and topics which are controversial that have got too much controversy concerning them uh, even in the public and has issues that people want to stay away from. They don't want to do a, choose a topic like that. Because sometimes, as a student, you may not be able to finish on time, and you may not even have answers, because everybody's staying, or the opinions are biased so much that you can't even get objective opinions concerning the answers that you are looking for. Good. Now, sometimes you also have topics which are too broad. Students which choose a topic, service marketing. I want to do a research on service marketing. What about it? I say, oh, I still want to do this research on service marketing. Or a, a, a topic that is quite outrageous in the context in which it's being placed in. It's a broad topic, but it's not relevant to where we are. For example, a student came to me to ask that, um, you want to do a research on why Ghana has not gone to space? And I said, oh, relevance? And you are in a business school and you want to do a research on why Ghana has not gone to space? Or another student who was saying that uh, if Ghana should move from an an eight-hour work schedule to go to an 18-hour work schedule. What would be the impact on roads? Not on job stress, uh, on roads. And I was asking him that, who, who does road transportation research within a business school? Two, you are trying to ask what if question, which is not bad because we, talk, we learned, we learned um, or, or wrong, we learned something about predictive research. But in this case, you are asking a what if question based on a phenomenon which is very, very far stretched from even our country. Hmm? How many people would have even thought about that? Anyway, so too much of a general topic or a broad topic may not be relevant or may be too broad for you to research on. And that's in that same way, a topic which is too narrow may not be also relevant or uh, uh, researchable for you. For example, you want to do a research on why John broke up with Sarah. 
this is like looks like witch hunting trying to find out why john left sarah you maybe ask the roommate of sarah he could answer the question for you you may not need to do a research but in another words what we are trying to point out is that if john is not maybe the president's son and sarah may be the president former president's daughter so you are studying presidential relationship with a unique case then stop it because you are narrowing down the question on john and sarah when there's nothing unique about them so if you're not an extreme unique case, then don't try to do a research on why John break up, broke up with Sarah. Maybe if you step out and try to do a research on determinants of breakups among, in relationships among undergraduates, that is quite generic, much more open for people to share different views and you may have a lot of different experiences. Quite a number of people have gone through this and they can share from their perspectives. Even uh, quite a number of people who are even finished university can even reflect back and even give you feedback on this one. But John broke up with Sarah, which is quite more of, looks like you are witch hunting for some why John and trying to find out why he's not with Sarah. And maybe John may ask you that, why are you also interested in Sarah? <laughs> okay. Now, so we have looked at some of the key things that we want to stay away from. So what should we try to do? Now, what can influence your topic? Six building blocks here. The first one is you, super, the second one is supervisor, then goes to gaps in research, data source, sponsor, and society. So let's pick the first one. You, you the researcher, your values, your interests, your beliefs, relevance, experiences that you have gone through. I write in my book that part of what influenced my choice of PhD topic was what I had gone through in my master's. We did an assignment in my master's which was focused much more on um, e-commerce um, in developing countries and just we we're just supposed to write a, a paper an essay on it and after that i fell in love with the topic and i wanted to do that one for a phd so sometimes your own interest an assignment that you have done or a topic that you did during a semester you could find out that oh, all the courses are being taught you like this topic very much so you it, it, it draws your attention hence you you want to do a topic and a research in that area so your topic of interest can come from you yourself. Now the reason why you is very important is because you are the one going to wake up at night to do the reading. You are the one going to sit down and do the writing. So if you are not interested in the topic, why didn't you want to start? So you play a key role in starting in choosing a choice of a topic. The next one is the supervisor. The supervisor is prime. It's more important than you. The reason is that for an, uh, within an university context, we said a degree is awarded. Who awards the, the degree? The, the supervisor plays a key role in awarding the degree in the sense that he is the one going to supervise you and going to attest that you have done a good dissertation and you should go and submit. So you want to make sure that the topic you choose has fits the interest of the supervisor. Otherwise, your supervisor relationship is going to be very poor. The supervisor can help you by helping you understand, help you understand what to choose, what to do, what not to do, how to develop your questionnaire, give you pointers on what you are going wrong or when you are veering off. So I always encourage, us, encourage students to always choose a topic that has a relationship to what their supervisor has taught before or has done research in the area before. For example, if you realize going to you, your CV of your supervisor or the resume or list of publication, you can find out some of the topic areas that he researches on. That can give you an insight into what are the possible interest areas that he may be relevant, may be relevant to him. Some supervisor gives the topic areas out and publish it to the students. Others also may have done a research on mobile phones or on um, relationship marketing a year ago or two years ago, but this year he's doing a research on consumer consumer behavior. So if you go with the relationship marketing, he may not be enthused like consumer behavior. So it's always good that you look at their list of publications, what they have done recently, what they have done in the past, and go and tell them that, oh, you, it seems you collected data on this and this in maybe Kumasi. I'm also interested in it, but I'm more like to do it from Takrade. So you're actually replicating the study. He may even share his questionnaire with you. It also helps him to even share his literature database, what he has downloaded already with you. So, but if you choose a novel area that your supervisor is not interested in, much of the heavy lifting is going to be done by you, the student. Because one, his interest is not there, and two, he may have no knowledge. Not all supervisors have every knowledge. You know, he has knowledge on how to supervise you, manage your work process, but he may not have in-depth knowledge on who are the key authors in the topic area you have chosen. So part, if you don't read a lot, you are going to just, he's going to feed on what you, bring, you tell him. So being to have ability of choosing a topic that is close relationship with what the supervisor is doing 
it's very it's a skill that you have to develop by going online to look at their cvs look at their resume and list of publications and going beyond that to have a chat with the supervisor so you can also have a chat with them and to understand what you have done research you have done before the next thing that can also influence your choice of topic is the data source the data source is where you collect data from sometimes you can be restricted to a particular data source because maybe you have interest in working in that company. So you want to do something on MTN Ghana. So whatever it is, even if your study doesn't fit MTN Ghana, for example, your, your supervisor is interested in 4G, and 4G is, is being popularized in Ghana by self line. MTN doesn't have self line. So you, you create a topic like why doesn't MTN have uh, uh, 4G? That's the topic you want to do. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So sometimes students push themselves into a particular topic area because of the data source. Or he wants to collect data from the northern region in Ghana because he works there and he realizes that maybe um, the topic doesn't fit there, but he still wants to do that. You want to be very careful about that. Make sure that the data source, even though, it's, even though it can guide you, doesn't let you try to fit a hat on a head that will not fit. Make sure that it has the data source and the topic have a connection together. Otherwise, they will have a poor link or a poor connection, a poor fit, and it will affect the whole study. Good. One other thing is you also want to be very careful with the current trends. Sometimes innovate innovations can even propel students to think about new topics that they want to research on. A student of mine did a search, research on cloud computing. And one of the reasons why he chose cloud computing because cloud computing is, is a buzzword in Ghana now and we've seen there's a drive by mobile companies to be able to provide cloud services to companies and to individual um, um, consumers. So. There's, a, there's an opportunity for you to do a research in that area. And these are some of the discussions that are going on in the media. Another topic that may be relevant is climate change. There's a lot of buzzwords about it. Or even terrorism, somebody can, or cyber crime. Because they have become current trends in society, somebody may be drawn to it. Now, what you want to be very careful about current trends is that sometimes they have not gained maturity. For example, the impact of wearables on consumer consumers in Ghana. Wearables are... Um, um, these watches that have smart watches that have come or smart devices that have come that you can wear them Google Glass and then the um, Samsung uh, gears that people are coming the Apple watch that has come up now how many Ghanaians own Apple watch it's even yet to be launched or how many Ghanaians own Google Glass or how many Ghanaians are even using um, um, Samsung gear even though you have got gear too now the penetration rate is quite low so if you want to do a research on that, then you have to maybe pick only Samsung workers. Or p and even though not all Samsung workers are actually owning that. So when you choose a contemporary topic, you always or a current trend, you always want to be also be very careful that has it gained enough maturity to for it to be researched on. Otherwise, the perceptions that you may get may not give you enough information to develop a very good answer to the research question that you may have. So current trend is interesting, but be very careful in choosing such a current trend. Sponsor. Sometimes a researcher may be sponsored by a company, and because of that, the research is supposed to be done for the company, or the research will be shared with the company. Now, two issues can happen here. The company can tell you that do the research on us and no other company, and when you finish, let us read it before you submit it. The second thing is that if they are going to read through it, that means that they can control what you can say out there or publish as your result. So, the difficulty comes with students. A student may be required by the university to be very critical. You do a study on accounting practices of SMEs, and you're working in a particular SME, they are sponsoring you, and you find some bad accounting practice, and you're going to give the report to them. And you know that in writing this report, it means that the MD is in trouble, or some employees will be in trouble. You are very if you are not very careful, you, are, you may also lose your own job by writing that. For example, my recommendation is that the MD should be fired and the uh, deputy MD should be reassigned to the local branch. Now, if you submit such a study, you know that the MD who signed for the sponsorship for you may end up writing that if I'm being fired, then you have to return the money back to, you, to the firm. So what will be relevant for you? And your supervisor is also expecting you to be critical. So our, we encourage that you represent a critical report to the university and present a different report. I don't know how you're going to water it down, but communicate it 
in a sense that it, it protects you yourself and maybe protects some of your respondents. Because some of the issues, if you write them, people can know, a person who is reading can know that, oh, this is, up to, this is pointing to this person, this is pointing to that person, which could actually affect the relationship that you may have with the company. We we'll encourage you that if you are doing something with the sponsor, you want to be very careful what you say and what you don't say in the document that you give to the sponsor. So, so sponsor can actually affect how the report turns out to be. Then you can also have the most important one we call the research gap. The most important point is the research gap because the research gap is what you are responding to. The research gap are, uh, gaps are discrepancies in existing research or literature which need to be addressed. So it means that these are issues or areas of study that there are reasonable gaps or le has received less attention. Hence, there is opportunity for you to bring something new and original. Meaning the knowledge that we have of in those topics are less or are inconclusive. So we need a better conclusion by doing a new research. Now, we, let me give an example. This is a, an illustration of a research gap from a paper which was written by Professor Abba, who is the Dean of the University of Ghana Business School. Now, he writes on corporate governance and financing decisions of Ghanaian listed firms. A listed firm is a, is a firm that is on the Ghana Stock Exchange. Now, he said corporate governance has been identified in previous studies to influence firms' financing or capital structure decisions, which also affect performance. So you understand that, that he's talking about that previous studies have established the relevance of corporate governance to firms financing decisions and their performance. Now, said so these empirical studies tended to focus mainly on developed econ economies with inconclusive results. Now, when somebody tells you that something has focused mainly on something, mainly on developed economies, what he's trying to point out is that there is a focus on one aspect, which is developed economies. That means that there is, if there's too much focus on A, that means that it's at the discrepancy of what or there's less focus on b so if they have been focused on developed economies that means that there's less focus on what developing economy so that's just one gap or and he also says that the ones that have even focused on developed economies have got inconclusive word results inconclusive results here yeah. inconclusive results means that the understanding or the findings are inconclusive so we still don't know what to do about it then he goes on to say again, very little. Now, very little also shows a discrepancy. The words are very little. Ha, have been, however, has been done on corporate governance in sub-Saharan Africa. Developed countries have got a lot, but they are inconclusive. Developing countries don't even have much. Among developing countries, you have got sub-Saharan Africa, which does very little, especially with respect to the with respect to firms financing decisions with respect to finance financing decisions so means that first financing decisions have not received much i hope you see that there first financing decisions have not received much especially in south Southern africa so with, within the first four lines prof abo has been able to establish about four gaps one gap with the too much focus on developed economies with inconclusive results first gap is that inconclusive results in current research on what uh, corporate governance and defense financing decisions Second gap is that there's too much focus on developed economies at the expense of developing economies. The third gap is the fact that even in Sub-Saharan Africa, there is less focus on it. The fourth gap is that within Sub-Saharan Africa, there is none, there's almost nothing on firms financing decisions. However, he continues to say that in Ghana, for instance, economic development and restructuring have introduced modern forms of business activity and diverse financing structures like Ghana Stock Exchange in the past two decades. Thus, firms are being exposed to more financing options than previously. It means that in Ghana, you have financing options being increased because of what stock exchange have and been introduced. Now, when financing decisions are increased, that means that Ghanaian firms have got more options for their financing. But it is happening in practice. There is not much research on it in what? In literature or in academia. So the gap here is that it is crucial to determine how current issues in corporate governance affect the financing decisions of Ghanaian firms. Prof. Abba found out that there was a gap in understanding corporate governance and firms financing decisions in Sub-Saharan Africa. To be able to do that, he realized that Ghana has, you see, there is a gap, a gap can exist because there is not much there to be researched. But he then realized that Ghana itself has now established what? 
stock exchange. And when you establish stock exchange, financing decision of firms increase. So when the stock exchange was established in 1993, now in 2007, after about how many years? After about 10 years, we can see that maturity has come. Remember what I mentioned that you do research, some research because of maturity is existing. Maturity has come on the issue, so we can now do research on what? Corporate governance and fairness financing decisions. So he says that this paper specifically examined the relationship between various variables of corporate governance and f capital structure decisions of firms listed on Ghana Stock Exchange during the six year period of 1998 to 2003. What do you see here? A longitudinal study panel, longitudinal study being done over what? Over some time. And he has been he's, he's doing it over some time because maturity has come. He can then tell us what is happening in corporate governance and first financial decision to be able to what address the gap that exists in the literature. So one thing is that he first found a gap in literature, but he didn't get jump into Ghana. Then he found out that if he does the research in Ghana, does Ghana have data to support the gap in the literature? Then he went on in Ghana to realize that Ghana has some data in the fact that Ghana has actually established stock exchange, which has gained maturity over 10 years now. So we can do research in that area to address the research gap. Do you realize it? So it's not just about finding a research gap in literature. You have to make sure that when you choose an area where you want to do a context where you want to do a study in, that the study have relevance. Can it be done there? Because you can find gaps. It is true that remember what I told you about my student that he said he wanted to do a research on why Ghana has not gone to space. Yes, Ghana has not gone to space. This is not true. But is it a gap in the literature? That is one. Even if you establish as a gap, is there suffi sufficient information or relevance to Ghana for you to go and do a research like that? Do you, do you, do you realize what I'm trying to say? It's like the next question that somebody asks is that why has Ghana not established a, a space station? <laughs> So, whatever you choose as your gap, you have to make it have a relevance in the context that you're going to do the research in. So, Prof. Abo established a gap and then found out that, that the gap has relevance to Ghana Stock Exchange and did a study on that. So, that's what we mean by a research gap. So, when you are choosing a topic, the first thing is that your topic is the one you choose, the broad area. Then, within your topic, you go into Google and other research databases to establish what has been done in the literature. To be able to know the research gap and when you know the research gap then you can be able to combine the gap and then the research topic to create what a research title so if you look at our of abos own he said corporate governance and financing decisions of ghanaian what listed firms when you look at it you see the topic is for corporate governance but a subset of it financing decisions of firms where ghanaian listed firms so there's relevance there there is focus there it's up is is responding to what a gap so choosing a topic is interesting. Any topic you choose has to be original. It has to has interest to you and then your supervisor. It also has to be timely and relevant. You don't go and choose a topic that everybody has done the research on and is not relevant today. It has to make contribution to existing knowledge. Me must respond to a research word gap. And then it has to be specific and distinct, not too broad. In fact, not too broad. He didn't say corporate governance and firms financing decision in the world. He said what? In Ghanaian listed firms. Okay. And incorporate the main purpose of the study. When you look at Prof. Abo's title, his title, you can see that. But the topic is there. It has to be clever and f unforgettable. Means that when it responds to a gap, people can make connections with it. I remember I did a study on telemedicine in Rwanda. And instead of writing telemedicine in Rwanda, I wrote that the challenge of taking baby steps telemedicine in Rwanda because we realized that they were just at the nascent stage of starting telemedicine there and that and most of the challenges we are facing was like every company that to any nation that was now trying to introduce early adoption stage of telemedicine so we said the challenge of what taking baby steps so that the title will make it more there was a study we did on cyber crime instead of just saying cyber crime in Ghana I said Sakawa cyber crime and criminality in Ghana so that why you because Sakawa is a Christian name for cyber crime in Ghana. So anybody who Google Sakawa in Ghana can bring out the paper. So I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. That it should be forgettable. Now the research questions that flow from it should be possible to address through a research design. That one is also very important. Now let's take a closer look at research gaps. 
We said research gaps are discrepancies in existing research or literature which need to be addressed or the areas of concentration that need some attention. Now, it's a critical po component of every research problem. The problems that are raising with research are called research problems. So the, it's a critical area for a critical component of every research problem. And it's true with your research gaps that you identify very good objectives and very good questions for your study. Now, your research gap tries to analyze or answer why should I read your work? Are you duplicating previous research? What is the potential contribution of this research? Is there any value or something new to be learned or discovered or described in this research? When you look at Prof. Abbott's work, you could see that there was something interesting and new to be done when you read the research problem. You read and you realized that there was interest in because something, there was a gap there and the gap would be relevant to Ghana. Good. So, and uh, to other researchers, a critical component of research pro problem. Now, there are different types of research gaps. One is called the issue gap. Issue gap, then you have got theory gap, method gap, context gap, and level of analysis gap. This can be found in my book. You can read on it into detail. But let's take it in one by one. An issue gap is an issue a research gap that focuses much more on the issues that are less discussed or have refused, ref received less attention in the literature. Unemployment has received a lot of attention. Female unemployment has received some attention, but female unemployment in the extractive industry has received less attention than female unemployment. So the issue that I want to research is combining extractive industry to what female unemployment. So that's my issue gap. An issue that has little is known about it. Then we also have the theory gap. Now with theory, theories help us to be able to understand the world. It gives us an understanding of how variables come together or certain factors come together to be able to explain or predict an issue or a phenomenon in the world. So whenever we are have an issue, a theory helps us to be able to break down the issue to understand what is occurring there. Sometimes the reason why we are there is a gap in research. It's not because of the issue not being there, because we are inconclusive on the theories of uh, trying to understand it. One of the reasons why theory gaps exist is because it's inconclusive, um, inconclusiveness in being able to address a particular issue. For example, the mobile phone adoption or mobile phone impact on poverty reduction. One thing that you have to realize is that for you to be able to use a mobile phone to change somebody's life, you need basic literacy or numeracy. Numeracy the ability to be able to understand numbers and then basic literacy has to be with either you have to be able to read or write. Second thing is that mobile expenditure, affording the phone, purchasing the phone or buying the airtime to be able to make the phone run. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. Now, if these things are not existing or are limited in any way, it's going to affect the ability of the person to use the mobile phone to change his lifestyle. I hope you understand me. So if you go ahead and just go and say the mobile phone impact, on the community is just because if you give them for me to just change their lives, you are lying. You need a multi-stranded theory, a theory that has multiple dimensions or multiple factors come together to create the change. So sometimes the reason why there are gaps in the research is that the perspective that we have looked at is only one dimension. We need another dimension or other dimension to look at it. For example, if you look at commitment, commitment can be studied from effective commitment normative commitment and then continuance uh, or conti uh, continuance now one thing that you realize is that in most research people look at affective commitment they don't look at the other forms of commitment another thing that can also happen i'm just using different factors you go into society looking for development issues there's economic perspective social perspective now you do research and say that on um, unemployment in ghana and you look at only economic factors what about the social factors so Theory gaps exist when we have only one factor dimension being used in research and we are not looking at other factors which may be relevant in conceptualizing how to solve the problem. So in other words, if the theory is a theoretical framework is less discussed or less represented in literature or the current theories are inconclusive in explaining what we are trying to study, then we have a theory gap. Sometimes a theory gap can be built around the fact that the theory itself is very good but it has not been as tested beyond where it was formed in. For example, in management, you may realize that most of the theories that were formed were, were have been developed and proposed were proposed in a developed country context for like protest models, protest competitive forces models were composed or developed for industries that are well formed and well structured. Now, if you get to a volatile market like West Africa or in Africa, and you want to translate protest models straight into a developing country, 
you may have find it very, find it very difficult to see all the five forces working in a particular industry. So it might not be easily translated. And that means that you can sometimes a student can pick a study by challenging a theory from one context which was developed in it to see whether the, the propositions in the theory, the propositions that have been post postulated in the theory are applicable in an emerging economic context. A method gap. A method gap has to do with the fact that the research approach has been focused on only one method at the expense of other methods or other methods are less represented. Sometimes a topic like unemployment has been studied more economic from an economic perspective with more numbers. So you see more quantitative studies. But if you do a qualitative study on unemployment, you really come to understand what it means to be unemployed. What it means to be unemployed and a person goes to church and he, he doesn't want to sit in front because he doesn't want to be seen that he was not putting money in the offering or collection basket. I hope you understand what I'm trying to study. And you see that unemployment can means that a person will say that he eats only one meal a day. But you can be able to, you can't get these experiences if you're doing a quantitative study. It is out of a qualitative study that you can get to see the meanings people associate. You realize that for an if you are studying unemployment from a qualitative perspective, you come to understand what maybe a shirt means to somebody and how, why he has only one white shirt and it's always neat. Why well, you're always in neat white shirt to say, oh, it's best to have only one. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. So, doing a research from, um, 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 uh, from the perspective that previous researchers have, research have looked in, into the same issue, but from one approach, maybe all have been quantitative, maybe all have been qualitative, but you want to use a mixed method approach, combining qualitative and quantitative. So that's why we say a method, a method gap can exist. Or all, all the studies have been, been quantitative is inconclusive. Then you can have contest gap. Contest gap may have to do with geographic region. All the studies are in developed economies at the expense of developing economies. We saw that earlier. Or all the studies are in West Africa and there's less studies about the issue on what, Southern Africa. Good. Then the level of analysis gap. Sometimes the studies can be done at different level of analysis. For example, you are trying to do a study on child trafficking and you can actually take it from child trafficking in Ghana at the micro level. Now what you can do is child trafficking in, in Ghana, evidence from victims, so you are interviewing victims. Or you can do child trafficking in Ghana, the role of religious institutions. You are now doing it at a meso level, looking at how religious institutions and other institutions in society can be able to curb or constrain child trafficking. Then you can say child trafficking in Ghana, a review of policies and frameworks. Then that one, that one then comes at the macro level where you look at national policies and how they affect child trafficking. Then child trafficking in West Africa, a comparative study of Ghana and Nigeria. Then you're coming to it at the meta level. So you can have the meta level study, a macro level study, a meso level study, and a micro level study. So at each of them, you could actually find out what gaps exist and then choose to do your study from that perspective. That's what you'd say that. Now, in terms of research, we always encourage that you can actually combine an issue and a context and get an issue and context gap. More often, most often than not, you are, you are, it's encouraging for students to choose a complex gap, combining two types of gaps, either an issue and context or an issue and theory or issue and method, issue and level of analysis, theory and context and theory and method. For somebody who is just doing um, uh, a business program like an MBA program, I may encourage you or an, a level 100 student, you may just do issue and context or issue and um, level of analysis. But for a research student or a PhD student, you may want to think about go beyond issue and context. So you sometimes look at issue and theory, and issue and theory and context and theory and method could be actually be. Because it actually increases the value of contribution that you actually bring to the research or the originality that you bring. Because sometimes just issue alone may not be that original unless you're able to add, especially at the PhD level, a PhD level unless you're able to add a theory to support it. Good. So how do you come up with a research gap? A research gap will be established through a number of steps. First of all, most of the research gaps always begin with a write-up that looks at acknowledging what has been done in the past. So they will say that they will establish the field by identifying what has been done in the past concerning the problem and then they would point out some of the gaps that exist, uh, be, uh, exist in the area and then make a choice for one of the gaps that they want to research on. So they will say 
establish a field of topic like corporate governance and friends financing decisions then summarize the previous research and complement them whilst these studies have been done in this area but these research have been focused on this and that and complement them but then you point out some of the gaps that exist and then make a case for new research so by the time you finish you create a space that this is what he wants to do and then make a point for it so look at this one this is an issue gap while there has been some research on the general impact of female unemployment so this is the some research acknowledging what has been done on the area already little has been done or written or about the effects of pit closure on women's lives so this guy is making a case for the need for more research on female employment after a pit close in the extractive industry so you see this example while there's been some research acknowledge what is there on the general impact of female unemployment little has been written about little has been published that is why you see this has been written about the effect of pit closure on women's lives look at this one too research problem illustrating a research issue gap the adoption of social media by government confronts a series of barriers so he's telling you there are some issues there are problems there some of these barriers relate to that he will list out the barriers records management privacy and security issues accuracy administration with specific requirements as social media includes two-way communication the risk of inserting more when government websites exist you see this reference here is the same as the reference that is here so what the author is doing is illustrating taking the problems and illustrating them so he's comp not commenting on them so the it people should be prepared to protect government's information 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 technology infrastructure governments that would like to implement social media need to verify if people in charge of updating the media will have time to update the new communication channel they also need to answer other questions to, uh, such as what to post how and when often they will update now this is another one briar's own and laxman's own now all of them is taken from the previous research that he pointed out that has been done so the lack of resources and position could undermine the accuracy of information posted he has described the nature of the problem illustrated literature from there then i say although the use of social media in mexican state portals is recent it's coming to a context of mexico the development of relationships between government and citizens is growing fast now i said it's recent when something is recent it means that it's yet to gain maturity However, in contrast with other countries, it's showing you a contest gap. In contrast with other countries, comparing Mexico and other countries, to our knowledge, there is still no guideline for the use of social media in Mexico. The study of perceived risks, benefits, and strategies will be very helpful in developing in those guidelines. So what it has been able to point out is that there's a need for you to develop guidelines for public sector use of, of social media. And if you don't do that, all these problems that he has listed here could occur. So the gap established the problems and pointed out that even in Mexico, they currently don't have a policy for social media, but other countries around Mexico may have it. So the gap is pointed out there that there should be a need for, there should, there's a need for strategies to, for our guidelines to guide the use of social media in the public sector in Mexico. Now this one is another one that looks as an, it goes beyond the issue gap to look at it something we may term as more of a, a theory gap coming from the mexico case which was an issue gap this is an example of a theory gap he says in education in general evaluation has played a vital role for more than 100 years in english language teaching also evaluation has been a major concern for over 20 years in contrast it's not going to show you a gap it is only recently that attention has been paid to evaluation of learning outcomes and self-access centers a self-access center is a center if you when you go there you could actually learn language yourself there are videos there are audio tapes there that you can play and learn language so there's no mediation by a teacher like how i'm doing that for you so however if you are to argue that such centers provide if an effective and efficient alternative to existing other existing modes of language learning it remains a matter of serious concern that there is no research-based model designed for their evaluation there is no research-based model designed for their what evaluation so it means that we don't know how to evaluate what self-access centers for of learning but if it was the traditional one where you have um, um traditional teaching where uh, there's a lecturer and then there's a student learning from the lecturer listening to the lecturer or as an audience of the lecturer that one we can ever have evaluation forms for that but if the student is learning by himself how do we evaluate it so he's asking the question that this paper will suggest four key ways 
which need to be addressed when considering the development of such evaluation model. He's saying that it's four key issues which needs to be addressed. He didn't say he's developing the model. So there is a model gap, but he's pointing now that he's going to give issues. One thing that I need to emphasize here about gaps is that when you find a gap, you can choose to do part of it. You don't need to do everything. Because if you finish it, we'll do the future research. In other words, what we are trying to point out is that you have to do what is within the reach of the researcher at that point in time. Time of resources, time to be able to invest in the research to be done. Uh, what is relevant? Sometimes a, a research is too comprehensive, and other you may break the research into different pieces to be able to do it. So this one says that it will consider four key issues that will be necessary for development of that model. Now, on this slide, we have a research method gap. On the research method gap, there have been a number of valuable studies of self-employment using cross-section data. Remember, I told you there's longitudinal and cross-section data. So he's pointing out that if there are too many studies on cross-section data, then there's a need for studies on what, longitudinal data. So all of which present evidence of a number of employment and personal characteristics on in the sector. However, none of these studies provides a picture of changes over the last decade. There's no what longitudinal study or forecast of trends time series in self-employment as a recession of 1992 code. So there's a need for studies of changes in self-employment over the last decade. So you need a longitudinal study instead of us just having more cross-sectional studies. This is how a method gap can be pointed out in terms of the way the data was collected. Now we look at this earlier, which is an issue context gap. Prof. Abbott talked about the issue of corporate governance and finance, fin finance financing decisions being over research in what developed economies and there's a need for you to do some in developing economies. The point that Ghana is ripe for such a research by pointing out that Ghana has a stock exchange which has, has received much input but less research. So there's need for research in that area. So he combined the context to the issue and solved the problem. Good. Then you can also have another context issue gap. Look at this one. Exam literature has fairly covered studies on mobile phone usage and mobile phones for development in sub-Saharan Africa. These studies include mobile phones and fishermen in Ghana, mobile phones sharing practices in Ghana, mobile phones and development in Nigeria, mobile payments in Uganda, and ownership, mobile phone ownership and social capital in Tanzania and South Africa. It's taking a stock of the countries that the studies have done in the context in which the studies were done. Despite these studies, there's a call for more studies to test earlier findings in different contexts. New environments and in different microeconomic activities. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say. To contribute to better understanding of the impact of mobile phones in developing economies. So we need more studies but in different contexts and in different what? Microeconomic activities. So don't do one which has pointed out here. Do something else. Now I remember this study was done by me and out of that I did a study on micro mobile phones and micro trading in Ghana. So I looked at traders. Good. So a good gap can be illustrated by missing issues in the literature, limited discussion in the literature, conflicts in the theoretical approach or missing theoretical model, conflicts in empirical methods, mixed empirical results, less contextual evaluation or complex issues. Complex issues by combining maybe one or two of them. Where are gaps found? Like in every um environment in which there's a leader and who is has power whenever you come into power one thing you do is that you look at what others have done and point out what you are going to do and when you're handing over power you also tell us what you try to do and what people should do in future so what you see in gaps is that gaps are always introduction of general articles or academic articles where the person who wrote the article tries to point out what has been done in the past and what has not yet been done so what he wants to do then when the person finishes his article at the end in the conclusions, he has a paragraph or a section called Future Research Directions. He points out that despite all that I have done or have said, there is still room for more research by doing A, B, and C. So he's pointing out some gaps for future researchers come and do. So that is what you see in Future Research Directions. So gaps can be found in two places. Gaps in the introduction of the research and gaps at the end of the research. Good. Now, how then do you create a research title? To create a research title, you have to identify your broad topic and discipline and then determine the scope where you are going to do it. Like Abbott chose Ghana Stock Exchange. Then you do some preliminary literature review. In fact, the literature review will help you determine the scope and determine a gap. So that you, when you determine the gap, it can help you narrow down better. 
Now, at this guy, he knew he wanted to do something on Ghana, but by determining doing the literature review, he could narrow down on the topic he wants to do and why he wants to do it and which part of Ghana he wants to focus on. And that's the same thing. After that, you can write your research problem, then from the problem, you can define your purpose, your objectives, and questions. Then, when you have done that, you can revisit your title or your topic to make it closer so that the relationship is fits perfectly. Sometimes when students finish everything, they don't go back to revisit their title because they think their title is being signed and approved. But the problem is that by the time you finish, you see that a better title comes in mind, especially after you have been able to finish collecting your first hand of data. Now you know that this is sure. Nothing has changed. You can still do this topic. So what do I mean by that? One thing I need to point out to many, many of us who are beginning research is that we usually begin research from the business field outside the research area. We start in society, we recognize something in society, an ill, a discrepancy in society, and you want to solve it. But for every business problem or social problem you find, there could be a thousand and one research questions for it. For example, how can our company improve the productivity of its employees could be a question that we have found from a decline in employee productivity. To be able to do that research, you could have different topics. Your topic could be put employee productivity in organizations. But how then do you do the researching? You step into research and realize that there are different research on productivity. There could be economic reasons to for productivity, social factors, job design factors. So you could come from uh, the impact of job design and employee productivity could be a research. Somebody could also do the impact of incentive, financial incentive on um, employee productivity. So there could be so many factors. Others can also stay away from the factors and ask themselves, what factors influence employee productivity? This question is more generic. But this question, what, what are the characteristics of productive employees? It's a different question. The second question on what are the characteristics of productive employees means that there is somebody or there is a title called productive employee who has a characteristic. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So you have to find the who is labeled as employee of the month and find out the characteristics. So the interview source or your data source for this may be a little bit different from this one. This one is the factors that influence employee productivity. You can ask any employee. But the second one has to do with productive employees, which is different. But both of them can address this question. So for every business question, you could have a thousand and one research question. That is why we say that the centrality of every research is the requesting that is what being asked. The centrality of every research is what? The question that is being asked. Okay. So now that you have been able to understand your topic that you have chosen and put it in research, you can ask which scope do you want to look in? Are you looking at one part of the organization, like productive employees in the finance department or productive employees in MTN by comparing different departments or productive employees in MTN Ghana comparing different branches? Not departments now, different word, branches. Then comparing to productive employees in the telecom sector, MTN and GLOW, or MTN and Vodafone, or productive employees in the sector in general, where you do a survey of all the firms. So you can pick it at different levels. You see where you are talking about the level of analysis gap. Okay. Now, when you have done that, then you have to go and do a literature review. You are going to do a literature review. So what we will do in the next session is to understand how to be able to find literature. Now, for your assignment, I want you to go online and download the slides. And there is a research que session question I have given to you. I want you to go through the session question. This comes from our paper on cybercrime and criminality in Ghana, Sakawa. And you can actually look at it. A research gap has been pointed out here. And I want you to identify the different types of gaps that are being um, um, listed out here. Actually, it's a good, a good practice for you. Also, at the end of the chapter in chapter two in the Research Made Easy book, there's also a, a, a past question from the examinations in it. You can also try it, your hands on it. Okay, so this brings us to the end of the session. We have been able to appreciate what a research gap is. We have been able to also appreciate um, how to select a research topic. And I believe that we, I will join you online for a very good forum discussion on our online platform. Thank you for listening in for our first session where we discuss research and define what research is and the different types of research. I hope to meet you in the second session where we looked at, we look into selecting a research topic and the third session where we start discussing how to do literature review. 
Thank you very much.